Of all the teams I'll be talking about in this lottery series, the Wizards are the one I'm the least sure about. Every other team in the lottery I look at and think that they either have a future contender on their hands, are heading in the right direction, and or have intriguing pieces. I don't feel that way about the Wizards at all. They feel stuck in the middle ground of not being good enough to be a contender or a real playoff team, but not bad enough to go for a rebuild, and they've made moves that put them in that position. However, while I don't think that they can draft a franchise savior at pick 8, I do think they have a chance to add a player that will put them in the right direction. I want to start with Bradley Beal because I think Bradley Beal might be the most disrespected player of his generation. Is he worth a quarter billion dollar supermax contract? No. Is that contract why the Wizards are stuck in the middle ground? More than likely yes. But I'm not going to blame someone for signing that contract when anyone would sign that contract. That's not on him. That's on the organization. But besides that, the narrative around Beal is that he's a player who was never a contributor to winning basketball and has been an empty numbers guy. However, Beal has made the playoffs 5 times in his career, including the season he averaged 31.3 points per game, and he has been a good playoff performer. A career 23.5 point per game, 4.6 rebound per game, 3.8 assists per game playoff player across 48 games in the playoffs. A five season stretch from 2017 to 2021 where he was a top three to five seeding guard in the league, averaging 26.1 points per game, 4.3 rebounds per game, 4.7 assists per game, including back to back 30 plus point per game seasons. I'm not saying Beal has been a superstar by any means, but I can call a player who averaged 23.1 points per game, 3.1 rebounds per game, and 3.5 assists per game on 48.2, 40.4, 82.5 splits on a 49 win team that was one win away from the conference finals at 23 years old and also only missed the playoffs three times in his first eight NBA seasons, a loser that's a stat patty. I do think the Wizards should move on from him. I do think that's going to be harder to move him because of that contract. But I also think the perception of Beal's NBA career has been very disrespectful. Outside of Beal, the Wizards' next two best players are forwards that have uncertain futures with the team. Kristaps Porzingis, aka Latvian Big Bird, has a $36 million player option this summer. I don't know if he'll accept or decline it. He had a good year. 23.2 points per game, 8.4 rebounds per game, 2.7 assists per game on 49.8, 38.5, 85.1 It's a stretch break that can box shots and do some off dribble stuff, but it's still limited due to how stiff his movements can be. It's really up to him. If he accepts the player option, so be it. If he doesn't, I wouldn't prioritize bringing him back. He's a good player, but I do think bringing him back on a long-term extension would keep the Wizards stuck in the middle ground even more than they already are. Then you have Kyle Kuzma, aka Hot Water Hot Sour Whoa Whoa. He also has a player option this summer. He will definitely decline that player option because it's $13 million. And after this season, he's worth a lot more than that. Kuzma was viewed as a future star at one point, averaging almost 19 points per game in his second NBA season on the Lakers which is the biggest NBA market in the world. In fact, he was viewed so highly that they traded future All-Star Brandon Ingram instead of him in the Anthony Davis trade. However, with Anthony Davis joining the team, Kuzma saw a regression to a 12 point per game scorer in the regular season and a 9 point per game playoff performer over the next two seasons. He did win a ring, he did contribute to that ring, but it was clear he wasn't the third star the Lakers hoped he would be which led to him being traded to the Wizards for future Hall of Fame point guard Russell Westbrook. Kuzma bounced back with the Wizards, averaging 17.1 points per game in year one with the team, and had the best season of his pro career this season, averaging 21.2 points per game, 7.2 rebounds per game, and 3.7 assists per game. However, like with Porzingis, I don't think they should bring him back for the same reason. Both are good players. They had good seasons but they both will be 28 years old next season and have proven that the production hasn't led to winning. 
So I think it would be a mistake to add contracts that would keep your team in mediocrity more than it already is when you don't have to. So I don't think the Wizards should bring back two of the three best players from this past season and I think they should move on from the best player that they have. But what about the other players? What about the young talent on the roster for the future? Well, there are only three names to really talk about here. Denny Advia, a 6'9 wing who's a good defender and solid connecting passer, but his offense, uh, specifically as a scorer I should say, hasn't really progressed. He's not a good suitor, and his offense is actually pretty bad scoring the basketball outside of finishing at the basket. He shot 71.4% at the rim on 2.1 attempts per game, which is solid. It's actually really good, I would say, more than solid. He shot 39.5% on 2 attempts per game between 3 to 10 feet. He shot 26.5% on 0.44 attempts per game from the mid range. He shot 29.7% on 3.1 attempts per game from 3. 37.1% on non rim attempt 2 pointers. 33% overall on non rim attempts scoring the basketball. So. He isn't good when it comes to scoring outside of the paint. So he really isn't much outside of good defense, solid connecting passing, and finishing at the basket on low volume. He can be a solid player, and I think the foundation is there. But he clearly was not worth the ninth overall pick, especially with Tyrese Halliburton, who's an all-star still on the board, Devin Vassell, someone who's proving he's one of the best young wings in the league on the board, and Tyrese Maxey, who, yeah, he went 21st overall, but many, including myself, thought he was a lot better than that. I thought he was the fourth best player in that draft. You can look it up on the other channel. I have a video basically saying that I believed in him as the fourth best player from the class, and many others had him as, as lottery guys. Like, go look at boards on the internet. Like, he went a lot lower than he should have, even at the time. Then you have Corey Kispert, who in my opinion is by far the best of the young guys. 11.1 points per game while also shooting 42.4% from 3 on 5.2 attempts per game. A solid passer as well. High field, just knows how to play the game of basketball. Not a high ceiling player, I would say, but a good bet long term to be a floor spacing starting wing for them. I like him a lot. And then you have Johnny Davis. The 10th overall pick in the 2022 NBA Draft. I said at the time, and I still believe, they should have taken Jalen Duran, AJ Griffin, or Tari Eason with that pick. And Davis didn't have a good rookie season, like, at all. I made a whole video talking about it. He spent a lot of time in the G League, where he wasn't that good. And he barely played in his first 14 NBA games. He averaged 1.1 points a game on 33.3 field goal percentage over those first 14 games because he barely played. He was picking up DMPs, he spent time in the G League obviously, and he will get like garbage time minutes. He's a tough player to project because his game on offense is based around tough shot making. He's a good defender with a high motor and good physicality. But he's not a good three-point shooter, and it's tough to make the adjustment to the NBA when you have this type of archetype on its own, let alone when you're limited because you aren't getting much opportunity, and even when you do get opportunity, you aren't allowed to play through mistakes. Which is why I prefer Duran, Eason, and Griffin. Those were three players that had really good rookie years. Some on playoff teams, specifically Griffin, the other two were on like two of the worst teams in the league, but they had good rookie years and they had roles and skills that were much easier to project to the NBA. However, there is some hope with Johnny Davis. He finally got consistent playing time over his last 14 games and he averaged 10.5 points per game on 39.2 field goal percentage. Not great numbers by any means, even for a 10th overall pick. But solid for a rookie guard known for a tough shot making base game and if he did that over a full season we wouldn't be questioning the pick as much. Hopefully he gets minutes in year 2 and progresses on the end of a solid season so his promise was a 3 point shooter, works on that in the offseason, gets better at that over time 
and puts that rough rookie season behind him. I don't want him to be a bad player by any stretch of the imagination. I want him to be good and have a bright career and find success where he can, as much success as possible. But as of right now, you know, you have Corey Kispert, who is a good suitor, but a limited ceiling player. Denny Advia, who is a solid defender and passer, but is just not a good scorer and wasn't worth the ninth overall pick. And Johnny Davis, who has promised and could prove me wrong, but as of right now, it's not looking like he was worth the 10th overall pick. Now, there are three players I like for the Wizards to potentially pick at 8th overall. Anthony Black, a 6'7 guard from Arkansas, a really good connecting playmaker, good defender, good slasher, draws contact really well, high field player, fits into any offense in my opinion, can play 1-3, through three, so he has positional versatility, Needs to work on his shot, but I will say it's further along than what Denny was as a suitor when he was coming out for that 2020 NBA draft. In fact, I would say it's even a lot more encouraging because of the fact that Anthony Black made real progress from his senior year of high school to this season at Arkansas. It's still very much a work in progress, but you do have to look at progressions and development uh, from prior stages when looking at prospects. You can't just look at the year and the progressions he's made are encouraging. He would be worth the eighth pick. High floor player, decently high ceiling. Think of like healthy Lonzo Ball or Josh Giddy when you think of Anthony Black. Not completely the same, but that same type of archetype. In fact, I would go as far to say that he reminds me a lot more of Giddy than Lonzo. And him, he himself has said that he models his game after Josh Giddy, so I think it's a good comp. Then you have Jed Howard, a 6'8", 215-pound wing from Michigan, the son of college legend, former top five pack and NBA All-Star, and current Michigan head coach Jawan Howard, one of the better three-point saviors in the class, also has a really good handle. I don't think that gets talked about enough. He can create offense off the bounce, because of how good that handle is. Good feel as a passer, not like a playmaker by any means, but makes good reads. I would say a good connector. Needs to do work defensively. Uh, part of that is like he's not the best lateral mover on defense in terms of foot speed. And some like times like he just gets lost a little bit, but I do think he has a good motor on that end of the four. And overall, I think he's underrated as a prospect. He had a really good start to the season and looked like a potential top five pick based off what he did early on in the season. But he cooled off down the stretch. Part of it was injuries that he dealt with. Part of it was, you know, just certain things popping up on tape in terms of shot selection and defensive awareness. And now he's projected like late lotto to mid first round. I still think he's worth a top 10 pick due to the role versatility he has. There's not an offense in the league he won't fit on and be able to contribute right away. A complete offensive skill set. He can create on and off the ball. He's a good suitor. He has a like, pull up ability. You know, he has good, you know, finishing indicators. Somebody that can create rim pressure with his handle and frame and has good feel for the game. Then you have Grady Dick, a 6'7 wing from Kansas, arguably the best suitor in the class, has on-ball potential, solid athlete, can play on and off the ball, good transition threat, good pull-up suitor, but needs to do a lot of work defensively. He, in my opinion, he is the worst of the three defensively. They have like Anthony Black, who's a really good defender, then you have Jet Howard, who is inconsistent on defense, but he does have some good traits. And then Grady Dick has some good trades, but like the defense needs like a ton of work. So there is that, but he would be worth the pick. Like the same reason I said he would be worth the 11th pick for Orlando is the same reason he would be worth the 8th pick for the Wizards. All three of these guys would be good picks for the Wizards in my opinion. The one I lean towards the most though is Jet Howard. In my opinion, he has the best combination of four and ceiling among these three. I am a lot higher on Jet than most of I will admit that. 
but the three-point shooting, the handle, the on-ball upside, the role versatility, the fact that he'll more than likely be one of the more NBA-ready guys the moment he gets drafted, it's just too good for me to not take it. He would be a steal if he actually goes in that 17 to 25 range you see on most mock drafts. So to get him at eight would be a good pick. You don't find guys that are six foot eight that handle the basketball the way he does, can suit the way he does, have the feel he does, and the role versatility that he does as well. So that's who I would take. What the Wizards actually will do, I don't know. You never know with them. As weird as this may sound, the Wizards need to get rid of any player that can contribute to wins that they can. Don't bring back Kyle Kuzma. Don't bring back Big Bird. They need to tank. They need to go full rebuild as much as they can. I know moving Bradley Beal is not going to be easy, and they might not be able to do it, and that's okay. But they need to try something else. Focus on the development of Johnny Davis and whoever they peg at eighth overall. The Beal, Kuzma, Porzingis big three is not going to get you anywhere. And that, honestly, it sounds really sad to call that a big three. It's time to hit the reset button. Look at when the Wizards were good. They had a guy. They had Gilbert Arenas. They had John Wall before the injuries. And Wall was on like an all-NBA like franchise player pace before the injuries. Go back even further than that, they had other great players that I can't think of off the top of my head. But the point is, they don't have that guy. Beal is a really good player. Again, I think he's the most disrespected great player of his generation. But he's not great enough to be the guy. He's more fit to be a number two option on our team. And they just don't have a guy. They need to find a guy. And it's not going to be in this draft more than likely. Maybe they strike gold and get that guy. But it's likely not going to happen. But they got to find it in the future. They don't have it now. They're not going to get in free agency. Again, just hit the reset button and try again. But that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm notified whenever I release a video. I'm making videos about basketball all the time, so if that interests you, I really think you enjoy this channel. And liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out. Help to build the channel. Helps me out in the YouTube algorithm so more people find my videos. So in turn, helps the channel grow so I create more content for you guys in the future. Let me know what you think about the Wizards in the comment section below. What do you think they should do as far as free agency moves? As far as the draft goes, love to do all that in the comment section below. Let's try to get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. That being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.